Good morning, everybody. Hopefully you guys had a good weekend. I had a really good Sunday. Um, wife and the kid finally got back to town after an arduous week, almost long trek across the United States. And I want to give a personal thank you here in the public forum. Um, a thank you to those who uh, assisted in that journey, those who uh, reached out and um, wanted to know what was going on and how they could help more than words can say thank you thank you thank you thank you but they are home glad to be in their own space finally and off the road after a long drive uh, i don't know how many of you ever took a ride across the united states but it's a big old place it's a big old place big old place it's big. So it's been good. It's been good. Um, now, this morning, it's going to be different, okay? This is going to be more of a historical lesson rather than biblical. Um, however, it will have a lot of biblical implications. Now, since the advent of this channel and me bringing up scripture, there have been people who are in the comment section who say that uh, the Bible has been messed with by man and there's no way to know for sure that it was and, and there are books left out and there's this and that and that and that myriads of excuses and they all point back to this supposed meeting of the Council of Nicaea where they came together and they decided what books were left out and what books and what books and all that stuff. Now, I want to make something kind of clear, if not it wasn't before. Um, that's not what took place. Um, so let's let's kind of get things in reference and stuff like that. Um, for people to understand fully what you have going on here. The Council of Nicaea was not for traditional church folk. It hadn't almost nothing to do with regular, normal Christian behavior. It was a council that was 98% structured within the Catholic faith. It was Catholic-based, ritualistic, to deal with conflicts among the different um, Catholic churches at the time of Constantine. Um, when they first met, it was somewhere in the region of 325 AD. Um, at least that's when they said it was. And they were meeting to create a certain method of operation within the Catholic church. Okay how to handle discord. Um, they met also to figure out the deity of Christ and what they would consider whether or not he was born of God or God put a part of him or what. And he, they, they came up with the whole Trinitarian thing. All that happened at the Council of Nicaea. Before all that, there had been translations of the biblical text everywhere. It had been going around for a long time. Okay. Hebrew didn't have, as I said, vowels and all that stuff. And there were many people that translated it into languages that added those texts so that it would make more sense to the people reading it. The conglomeration of books that we now call the Bible was not done by the Council of Nicaea. It simply wasn't. 
Now, I've said this before. The conglomeration of books that we call the Bible is not, and I repeat, is not how the text were written. Everything was written over a sequential time. The book as we have it today is just a way for it to be encyclopedic, and they put it in sequence. That's all. Makes it easier to read in sequence of time. It makes it easier to have a layout of the beginning to the time of Christ being here and some years after. It is not, I repeat, it is not divinely done. The words are, the books are, and there are multiple translations of the Bible that you can easily go back if you want to because it's out there and find out if what they have in the book as we have it now, right or wrong. It's out there. If you take the time to learn a little bit of Greek, a little bit of Hebrew, if there's any categorical issues with it, you can go and look it up and see how far off a certain translation is. They now make little books that go as a supplementary guide of Hebrew, Greek, for you to go back and read. You can go to the translation of your choice, open up this comp su supplementary text, find a word, see if it is that way, see if it's not. What we've become accustomed to, however, is taking man's word for stuff and just running with it. That, that's what we've become accustomed to. So let's talk about the Council of Nicaea. Uh, I've had one before. I've long since stopped caring about the translation issues. I have. I've long since stopped caring. Here's why I've stopped caring. I have a translator. I, I have a translator. And it's not a book translator. It's a spiritual translator. And if the topic I'm dealing with is not one that deals with my salvation, it's inconsequential to a point. So I have a translator. So let's go through some things. This was their agenda at the council. They came up with the Nicene Creed. They also came up with the Apostles' Creed. Um, this is the, I'm going to give you a point by point thing because they had a group called the Arians. And the Arians claimed that Jesus Christ was created and the council concluded that he was begotten, that he was not made. Now, what you're going to start hearing, seeing, is a lot of hanging up about ways to control people. But this is the MO of the Catholic Church anyway. From the advent of bishops, which was not Christian, just an FYI, if you have a bishop and you regard him as a Christian thing that never started in Christianity, it never had any affiliations with Christianity, it was never meant to be applied to Christianity, that was taken from a secular thing and applied to Christianity. It, it is not. It, it just means a leader. A, a, a bishop has nothing to do with God. FYI, just because you have the title of bishop does not mean you are godly. It just means you're leading a group of people, and it could be that you're leading them straight to hell. So I don't care about your bishop and your titles. You can keep that. No one cares about your title. God never ordained no bishop. You don't get ordained as a bishop biblically. Let's get that straight. There is no bishop in the Bible. None. There's a leader. There's no bishop. 
it was used long before Christianity even came into being. Just an FYI, just clear that part up. So, they also argued that Christ was created out of nothing or out of something else, and the council confirmed that he was begotten out of the substance of the Father. Since the statement in the creed that Jesus Christ um, is in home union with the Father, the same of the same substance does not counter any of the Aaron claims as affected by the condemnation. So in other words, what they're trying to tell you is that the meeting was to try and decimate whether or not Christ was born of or created from. Not quite sure how logically you can't see that a baby is created, but the spirit is from. It's, it's the exact same. They're one in the same. He was born of and created. That's that's normal. And he was part of the Father because it was the Word made flesh. It is not that difficult. But what the council was seeking to do was try and relegate people's thinking to having them having the truth about the matter. And again, all of this was coming from the Catholic's point of view, not necessarily the Christian point of view. Now, I can see where people can easily say that the Christianity thing, it was a creation of the, the Catholic Church, but it was not. Long before, they were called a certain name because of their behavior, and it stuck. Okay? So just, just understand that. They wanted to celebrate Easter, so they had to pick the date for the celebration of Easter. Um. They wanted to meet about matters of church discipline, which resulted in the 20 canons. Um, organizational structure of the church. Dignity standards of the clergy. Uh, reconciliation of the lapsed. Readmission to the church for heretics and some <laughs> liturgical practice. This is what the Council of Nicaea met together to do. This is what they've been doing. Okay, now it was all a lot of pomp and circumstance. It was a way for Constantine to establish his his, his rule and headship. Um, was a way to plant his name and cement it in the Catholic Church as one of the leaders, and he succeeded in doing that. He succeeded fully in doing that. The Nicene Creed came out of this whole meeting. And again, when you look at the Nicene Creed, you'll see something very crazy. Okay, so I'm going to read the whole Nicene Creed for you. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of all things, visible and invisible, and the one Lord, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, begotten of the Father, only begotten, that is, from the substance of the Father, God from God, light from light, the true God from true God, begotten, not made, one substance of the Father through whom all things came to being, things in heaven and things on earth, who because of men and because of our salvation came down and because and became incarnate and became man and suffered and rose again a third day. I don't know exactly how you rise again if you hadn't risen before. But anyway, um, on the third day, and ascended to the heavens and became and will come to judge living and dead in the Holy Spirit. And as... For those who say there was when he was not and before he was born was not and that he came into existence out of nothing or who assert that the Son of God is of different hypostasis and substance or created or subject to alter alteration or change, these, the Catholic and Apostolic Church, in any case... anathematizes. Now, when the council met, their goal was to try and create in the minds a um, method of operation, one, and a, um, a line of thinking for the so-called believer. They wanted to cement in their minds the substance of Christ, his location in the so-called Trinity, and so on and so forth. Now, for those of you who 
no one followed this channel um may also be aware that that whole concept of the trinity thing for me i don't i don't subscribe to and if you want to know why exactly you can go back and watch that i'm not going to go into detail it here but i'm just letting you know that i don't subscribe to that um i'm not saying that they're not three entities or three personas but i don't subscribe to this trinity nonsense i just i just don't um, it was never mentioned and you can call it what you want but there is no such mention of anything of the kind in the bible you can nitpick and you can parse apart and you can infer and all that stuff infer all you want it's never mentioned i'm not using it I i'm not i'm going based on what he said and what he said was he is god jesus came word made flesh and he left the holy spirit that's all i need to know i don't need to put a name on there i don't i don't need to put a name on them I have three different roles that I was given to follow. In order to unify me back to the Father, Jesus was sent. When Jesus died and came back to life and left earth, he left the Spirit. That's all I need to know. That's it. Period. Point blank. Don't give me this Trinity nonsense. Keep it to yourself. I don't want to hear it. I don't care about it. Don't care. Okay. The council came away with these things. The Jesus Christ is described as light from light and true God from true God, proclaiming his divinity. Of course, that was never written in any text. What happened during this council is that they started to create a narrative for the way people would end up reading the text that they came away with. We are creatures of habit of saying certain things. Just like the world has got us into this nonsense of saying trans men and trans women, that's BS on the cover and it's BS on the bottom. You are not trans. No one exists that ever has transmissioned over into anything at all. You're born male, you die male. You're born female, you die female. You don't transition into anything. You're mentally insane. And I'm going to say it to your face, you have mental problems or a spirit of delusion on you and you need deliverance or you need psychiatric help. Period, point blank. Okay? They were trying to make people use certain terms in order to follow the way they were thinking. This whole idea of Jesus was said to be begotten, not made. They're trying to make an inference here of something that will keep people coming back to the Catholic Church. From the substance of the Father. Terms like that that make people believe a certain thing. The substance of the Father. It's literally said in the book that he was the word made flesh. And he was in the beginning with the Father. It's pretty plain right there. Word made flesh Jesus. No mention of the light, light, light this and the light of substance and all that. You are trying to create a narrative for people to come to you to find information. That's all they were trying to do. Okay, that's all they were trying to do. The advent of the Easter celebration, which of course we know was taken from pagan celebrations, and they're trying to find a date to separate it from the pagan celebration so they can say it's theirs. And then, of course, the promulgation of all canon laws that they had to create for the church. The church. Now, as far as the papacy goes, because all of this links back to the Catholic Church. Let's just take it being, okay? It links back to the Catholic Church. The purpose of the council was to try and relegate everything under one auspices. And they succeeded in doing that, as you can see today, where they have the Vatican. So they have everything under one head. Meanwhile, they're also telling you that there are three heads for God, but there's only one for them. I, I want people to be clear about how this works, okay? There's one location. You report to one man. But when it comes to God, there are three.
Okay. All right. I'm just wanted to make sure you understand that. Now, because the entire Catholic Church was based on a complete and utter lie, everything they do after that point will continually be lies. Hence why they had to kind of create an assembly to where they can propagate their lie into canon and make it law so that you couldn't transgress against it. And if you did transgress against the law that they wrote for themselves without God, they can dictate whether or not you can be part of the church that God made, but they, you know, uh, usurp. Now they can tell you whether or not you can make it back in based on the head that they put in place, the Pope. You don't have to go through any of the channels that God put in place. This is what this is where the council got dangerous. You don't go through God to get back in. You go through the Pope to get back in. And they created rules for that. Now, because I said that they started out as a lie, people might want to know what lie did they start off on? This is the lie. The very first Pope, they said, was Peter. Not by Peter's admission. Not by Peter's admission. By their canonization of Peter. They decided that Peter was going to be the first Pope. Peter never put himself as the first, first Pope. According to Catholic tradition, he received the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Where did they get that from? Where did they get this thing about Peter being the Pope? I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So men took that to mean that Peter was God's emissary on earth, and he was given keys to the kingdom of heaven. Right? That's what they say. So let's do ourselves a favor, shall we? Let's put to rest once and for all this stupidity. Let's read exactly what it says. Peter confesses Jesus as the Christ. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 13, they started at verse 18. Let's go from verse 13, shall we? When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But he said to them, Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood had not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. The rock what? What rock? The truth. The truth of his statement. The truth of his statement. That he was Christ, the Son of the living God. And you know who can't prevail against that truth? the gates of hell. And you knew he was going to give the keys to the kingdom of heaven? Those that have that same statement on their lips. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. You know who the key to the kingdom of heaven is? Himself. He was going to give himself to those who have the statement made by Peter as their cornerstone. Plain and simple. This has nothing to do with making anyone a pope. Not a single thing. So when the council met, their endeavor was to create for themselves the organization with which they can control the masses. 
That's all it was. And they succeeded in doing that. They managed to procreate for themselves an entire following. An entire following. To follow one man who reached all the way back to Peter to say that that was God's emissary and anyone in his line doesn't even have to be necessarily of the blood of Peter, just, you know, Peter just being the first pope. Any man after that line will be the next pope and emissary for the people. Plain and simple. So we have now before us the questions of whether or not what we see here in this meeting affected the Bible. It did not. They had no intentions to go after the book. They had their own canon anyway. They had their own lineup. They had their own translation. They had it in the Latin. So they didn't need to worry about that. The conglomeration of books had already been established. Multiple translations of the book actually have other verses from other texts in it. You can, and any of the books that you think are missing from the Bible are there for you to go read. They're not absent. They're just not in the timeline because 90% of them are repeated in one or two of the books that are in the old or in the new. I would venture to say, this is me, the untrained scholar, whatever you want to call it. 90% of the books that are absent from the conglomeration of books we call the Bible are repeats of the books that are currently in there. We went through the book of Enoch and almost all of the stories in the book of Enoch are listed in at least one or two or three of the books in the Old Testament that are there. There are some details about giants, but even that is mentioned in other books. So they're not absent. They are not absent. The stories are all there for you to go read, and the ones that are in there are sequential. And in either case, in either case, he left a translator for you and a connection to the author in either case. He didn't leave you a pope to have to talk to for your salvation. He left you Jesus for that. He did not need to leave a stinking pope. Especially a pope who does nothing about men in his clergy who sexually abuse children. If that's the kind of leader that God would leave, what kind of God would he be? No God at all. None. If God is a God of righteousness and truth, and he's in the business of weeding out evil from within his own people, case in point, Judas, why would he leave one of the most disgustingly vile human beings on earth as the head of his representative here in the headship of the popes? Some of the most vile people the most disgusting men on earth are in priestly garb. There is no way my God would do that. He would not leave his message in the hand of a heathen. He would not leave his message in the hand of a disgusting, perverted sinner. He wouldn't do it. especially one that not only does it, but duplicates himself throughout the entire globe of pedophiles. Why would he do that? Now, if you are a Catholic listening to this, I don't care if you get mad. I really do not care if you get mad. I don't care if you get hurt. I don't care if your soul is in sorrow. I don't care if you cry after hearing this. I do not care. 
You cannot be that dumb to where you don't understand what your people are doing to you and lying to you about when it comes to God. If you want to keep following that nonsense, feel free. Go confess your so-called sins to somebody who is probably doing more than you in the back with the altar boys. Feel free. If that's how you want to live, feel free. Just don't ascribe none of that BS to God. Don't do that. You're signing up for a, 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 a like instantaneous hell if you do that. But if you want that, feel free. Feel free. But understand this. The council did not do anything with which books were included or not included in today's modern Bible. Multiple hands have translated the old script from Hebrew into multiple languages. And with any translation, you're going to have variances with words. Because not every culture has multiple words for one thing. Some of them have one word for multiple actions. And it is up to the person reading it in that language to use context. So to say you can't trust the word of God, fine. Don't trust the word of God that you say is written in the Bible. Don't trust it. That's okay. But you know what he left you as an alternative? To take what you read to him and find out for yourself if it's real. You don't need a priest. You don't need a pastor. You don't need any of that. You don't. You simply don't. When you enter into his following, you have become a royal priesthood. You, just like the priests of old, have access to the innermost, right? To the holy of holies. Because he rend the curtain when he died. If you remember carefully, now I'm going to make sure I have people understand. You don't need a leader. You don't need a priest. You don't need a preacher. You don't need any of that. You don't need them. The whole purpose of Jesus dying which happened in real time at the time of his death, is that the curtain was torn. No more are you going to have to go through any man to access the Father. You don't. That's not me saying that. He did that. That was what he did. He ran us under that, cart, that curtain that kept people from the outer court, the inner court, and they can all enter into the Holy of Holies. That's what he did. And you entered into the Holy of Holies because his blood, which would normally needed to get in there, covered you as sanctified to be before the author, to be before God. That was the purpose of his death. There had to be a passageway in. You do not need a stupid pope, which is what he is, a fool and stupid no man of God would sign a treaty with other religions that dog him for the effort of peace. God would not align himself with a heathen or a pagan or a Satan worshiper for peace. He does not do that. He does not fellowship with darkness. The instant the papacy did that, it should have told you that they were a satanic cult. They were not of God. Plain and simple. I, I don't know how much clearer they have to make it for stupid people to understand. Even the dumbest of the dumb should be able to understand that if you sign a pact with the devil, you're obviously not following God. It's not rocket science. It's not brain surgery. The reason that none of this at the council matters to us is because it had nothing to do with actual Christians. It had everything to do with the cult of the Catholic Church and the headship that they were trying to create by using God as their bonding agent. They needed a name 
they needed a vehicle by which people could say that they were ordained by, that they would listen to. God was that vehicle. And the easiest way to make people believe you is to say you got it directly from. And it, you know how we got it direct? We all met with different ideas and we all came with the same idea at the end of it. That must be God. No. No. Throughout the entirety of the books of the Bible. God had one directive. And that directive has not changed. What is that directive? Come to me. He has always told people to come to him. That never changed. And I mean never. He never told anyone to go to anyone but him. Even if you want to say when he sent Paul after striking him down to go meet with other people, they directed him somewhere else. And he had an encounter with God long before that. Every person ever that came out of stupor and sin had to encounter one very important person, and that was God. You did not need to be appointed a pope to speak to God. Nor do you need a translator for yourself. You need to go talk to the person that wrote the book. And no amount of time, passage of time, the removal of documents, the changing of language, the translation of language, will ever defeat getting it straight from the horse's mouth. It will never defeat that, never trump it. Never. Now, of course, if you're one of those people that don't believe God speaks today, then don't believe that God speaks today and he won't speak to you. It'll make sense to you and you'll be okay. You can go listen to your, you know, your, your bishop, your pastor or whatever it is. And depend on him to translate everything for you or to tell you how to live. But you actually never do the things he say, mind you. Even if he might be saying something spectacular, you don't follow that because you're following him. You could easily have a great pastor that tells you exactly what to do. There are many that will listen to him and just keep coming back to listen to him and not do anything that he instructs them to. There are tons of people like that too. Now, I'm not saying every pastor is wrong and every bishop is wrong, but understand the title does not make you more ahead of the line to speak to God than me. My having a platform does not put me anywhere near to God that it doesn't put you. The line to God is one that's abreast, not in formation, not back to back to back it's in abreast everyone side by side everyone has the same audience no one's behind no one's Zacchaeus up on top of a tree trying to look over everyone has equal audience with God because he can do that you also don't need to send an emissary forward to talk to him on your behalf he already took care of that in the person of Jesus He was so proactive that he even has someone to translate for him what you're thinking. The things that you don't even know how to ask for, he's already known about because of who he sent to translate that for him. He's already ahead of the game. He does not need man to do that. Nor do you need man. You don't. Your whole goal 
as a believer is pretty simple. But we like to complicate it. We love to complicate it. Fear God and keep his commandments. And of course, the first thing we do is run to the Old Testament to get the commandments and try to keep them that way. And when we fail, oh, oh, and then we, he's the fulfillment of the commandments and the only way to fully keep them is to abide. It is, it is, he has, when he has made it so easy and we just want to overcomplicate everything. Why? Because we think that we are good enough still. We still believe that we're good enough, that we can actually pull this off. We could pull this off. Uh, what exactly are you talking about, Lisa? What, what two fathers are you talking about? P please explain the so-called two fathers that you're talking about. I, I really need to know. Well, what, what do you mean by a heavenly one and an earthly one? Please explain that to me. I need to know. Please tell me. I'm, I'm super curious. Super, super curious. Please tell me. What exactly do you mean? I get that you said an earthly and God, but tell me what do you mean by an earthly father? I'm curious about the earthly father part. I'm assuming you mean a fleshly given seed to the mother, mother birth a child type father. I'm assuming that's what you mean. But in no way, shape, or form is that father anywhere near the father we're talking about. I know who you were talking to. I'm asking you a question, though. Please explain to me the, the father thing. I just want to know. I'm keeping track of the conversations, and I just would really like to know. Who's the earthly father? If you can just let me know that. I, I'm, call me curious. I, in heaven and, and earth. Good. So who's the earthly father? It, you're not answering that question. That's the question I have. Who is the earthly father you're talking about? I, I don't think it's a difficult question. I just, I just like clarification. People who know me know I like clarification. So if you can, just please uh, clarify it for me. Who's the, uh, who's the earthly father you're talking about? Are you talking about like people who have fathers, you know, like mother and father, and they birth their children, and then that becomes like my kids have me as their father? Is that the kind of earthly father you're talking about? So, you know, so it is daddy, like my dad and your dad and that kind of, that, that, that's kind of obvious that you have a father on earth, but we're not even remotely talking about flesh and blood here. We're, we're talking about God. And, and no one's angry. I, I don't know where you got anger from. I, I, so me asking you a question for clarification is anger now? That, that's how that comes across? Okay. So you talking in the chat, I can't get clarification about the stuff you're saying in the chat room that I opened up. When did that become a rule? I I, I don't know how that became a rule. I mean, I saw you have a question for other people and it piqued my interest about what you meant. So I asked you a question. How how is that anger? I I don't get how that's anger. What? Anyway. I, I tell you, I, people, people really don't know what anger is anymore. I, not, that's confusing. That's highly confusing. In any case, everyone knows that everyone has a father. It, you really can't come to be unless the seed is there and the seed comes from the male and the male is also the father. So yes, that's obvious. We know that. Um, no one needs clarification on that unless it's normal, well, people today who think that a man can be a woman and a woman can be a man and a mother can be a father and a father can be a mother. Now, those people need clarification, but they also, there's no help for them. 
But we're talking about spiritual fathers and spiritual children. And there's only one spiritual father. And that's the most consequential one, the spiritual father. And he left access to us through his son via the blood to be able to stand before him and speak to him directly to get any questions we need answered about his word. He left that completely open. Once, hear me out now, once you are covered by the blood of his son. The only person allowed before him was the one that was sacrificed. And what the sacrifice did was that just like with the old sacrificial laws, the blood of the sacrificed covered the one seeking atonement. The difference between Jesus' blood and the blood of rams and goats is that one was permanent. And that was the blood of Jesus. It was permanent. And the only way for you to stand redeemed before the throne of God is to be covered by that blood. Not some random hobo Joe off the street, not knowing God, not knowing and covered by the blood of Jesus cannot just go stand before the throne. He can't do it. Now you can approach Jesus and ask to be covered by his blood and enter by that way. Then you have an audience with the throne. There is a process. And it's not a process that any council can undo. It's not a process that any council could just decide is different and you need to go through a pope instead of Jesus. There is no council on earth that can take away the role position of the blood and replace it with a man in a dress with a fish on his head sitting in a stadium looking like a snake. There is no place on earth anywhere written or unwritten that that will ever be accepted, ever. A man swinging a piece of pipe with smoke coming out of it and splashing water on children and slapping them and then having uh, sexual relationships with the boys at his altar and then worshiping a pagan god in Dagon and having a whole monstrous statue behind him and behaving as though he is himself god, that don't fly. The council tried to make it fly and it succeeded in fooling many people into believing that the Catholic Church is the church of all churches and that their method is the only way to heaven. And if you don't do what they do, they can send you to hell and purgatory and every other place they come up with to send your soul to. And you can purchase your way out of that if you would just do what they said. That was the council. That's what it was for. And the easiest way to do anything is to not join the circus. Just don't join the circus. They're, accept they're, they're expecting you to join any circus they have. Just don't do it. Don't do it. But I figured I'd tackle this simply because I don't want anyone ever coming back into the chat conversation talking about how you can't be using the Bible because the council did this and that to the Bible and they decided what books wouldn't be in it. That never happened. It will never happen. No one ever did that. That's a lie. And, and don't be bringing your lies here. If you want to go find any books that might be out there that you so-called was left out of the Bible, it's there for you to see it. And no one deleted the books. It's not like on, a, on your computer where you delete the files and empty the bin. It's right there. You can go read the book. No one's keeping you from reading every book ever written. Nobody. And if, if God wants you to go read the book, you know what you could do? Ask him, should I read that book? And he'll tell you to read the book or not read the book. It's really that simple. 
The Bible, as you have it, is a conglomeration of sequential books that they found that were written throughout time that would make the most sense for people to understand the lineage that brought us to the cross. That is all the book does. It gives you really good sequential layout of the story that saved us. It'll tell you who, but you approaching him is up to you and only you. You wanting to know him, you will never be birthed out of reading that book. That has to be something you want to do, that you need to do. Because any time you search the scriptures hoping you'd find life, that's not where it is. That's not where it is. Nobody went at you, Lisa. Stop lying. Nobody went at you. It was a simple question that you couldn't answer. I was simply asking you, went off on five different tangents without answering the question. Nobody went at you. If you've been around this channel any length of time, you should know what going after somebody looks like. I never went after you. Please stop lying. Just stop lying. I will tolerate the conversation with you, but I'm not going to put up with you lying on me. Nobody went after you. And if I went after you, why are you still here? If you genuinely think I went after you, why are you still here? You like abuse? Do you love abuse? Is that how you, you've grown up? You love abuse? Just leave. If you think I went after you, get out of here. Take your sensitive self and leave. It's that easy. Ain't nobody begging you to be here. Nobody begged you to come into the room. Now I'm going after you because you're lying on me. You could take your hearty self and leave. Ain't nobody asking you to stay here. Like literally nobody is begging Lisa to stay. Nobody in the chat is saying, oh, Lisa, please don't leave. Please don't leave. Nobody cares. You can go. You hate fair media, so why are you here? Just leave. Dummy, I'm going to help you. How about this? I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you dumb. I'm going to help you help you dumb behind. Leave. I'll just kick you out. I don't want nobody coming in here lying on me. Simple question you can't answer. You get so sensitive that you don't even want to approach the question because you know what you were saying. You believe in the Pope. But now you're backtracking. Oh, it's earthly father. I'm talking about the one that raised you. Liar. Liar. And I'm not giving the evil one any attention, Gamma. Again, if anybody has ever watched, ever watched any of my programs, you'll understand that the things I point out usually fit into exactly what I'm talking about. She is one of them. You want to know how the indoctrination can get so strong? You want proof that the indoctrination is strong? Look at Lisa. Look at Lisa. If you want to see what the indoctrination can do to people, look at people like Lisa. So not giving the evil one attention. I'm highlighting exactly what I'm talking about. The instant you can tell me, oh, we have two fathers, it means one of two things. In your mind, you genuinely believe the nonsense you just spoke or you are trying to parse the heavenly father on the same par as your earthly one. And that don't fly either. Even your earthly father is only a small archetype of who he is. There is no, when I say zero, zero comparison in personage between the two. None. You want a precursor, a little taste of what God is like? You could probably look to a really, really great father and get that. You can look to a really great father and get a smidgen of who God is. There's no comparison between the two, though. But that's what the indoctrination will do to you.
That's what indoctrination will do to you. It'll help you to relinquish your following of God to the following of man. And in turn, it'll take you away from him and not have you follow him at all. Eventually, you'll start realizing that what you're doing is following what a man said. Always. I will never stop asking you to take it to the author. Never. I will never stop asking, telling you to take every concern, every question, everything you have, not to a man, to the author. He is the only one who can answer your questions about him. No one else. Everyone else will give you a version He will give you the real deal. There's no reason why you shouldn't take everything to him. He left an opening. He asked you to do it. He's made it simple. No need to complicate this. You don't need a rosary. You don't need to Hail Mary. You don't need a sequence of words. This is not like a lock. This is not some kind of cultish thing. It's just go talk to him. He, he wants that relationship. He wants the relationship. Now, mind you, he doesn't want the relationship because of how awesome you are. He wants the relationship because of how awesome he is. Please understand that. The entirety of man is about the reverence and respect for the awe of God. Not for his awe of us. He saved you so that you can recognize how awesome he is by doing that. Not how salvageable we were. He did it because of how wonderful he is. How gracious he is. How merciful he is. It had nothing to do with how awesome we are. We were fallen. We were filthy rags. We had nothing to offer him. But his salvation offered to us elicits praise. You don't have to. You don't have to follow God. You don't have to believe him. But if that's the route you take, don't complain at the end of it. Take what you are. Take what the road you're taking. Take it. Have at it. That's the road you pick. Pick it. Is it being selfish to get God's opinion on every... No, actually, that's what we're supposed to do. We are supposed to be dependent on him for our daily bread. <laughs> do you realize how necessary daily things are, much less food? Everything we're supposed to be relying on him, and I mean everything, everything. There is zero that we shouldn't be consulting them for. The instant you ever find yourself saying, I got this, 
and not realizing that you may have had it because of him that might be a first problem that might be a problem in any case don't be elisa you have one father who is overall through all in all above all period and he's asking you to come to him so go so go just go tomorrow's topic has not been picked he has not dropped that on me yet he's he dropped this one on me no she's home she finally made it home last night surely they drove in at 6 30 our time a 12 hour drive Yeah, she was beat, 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 tired. Ironically, little man was really excited because he made it home. And so he was on cloud nine that he was home and he got to see his dog and he got to see his cat and he got to see his siblings. And so he's happy. Everyone's happy. Everyone's doing good. We're glad to have the house back to full and uh, whole again. So it was great. But again, thank you for those who assisted along the journey. Um, that helped with the situation while she was over in New Jersey. Um, that's interesting emergency. So thank you for those that put your hands to the, the mill and helped with that. It like incalculable the thanks I have for you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, she'll be getting some rest. The house is taken care of. She don't got to worry about that. It's, it was taken care of before she got here. So she has at least a couple of days before our little minion, that seven year old, starts to get things out of hand again. So. <laughs> He has a he has a few days before he starts to create chaos in the home. So once that takes place, then she'll be back to the millstone again. But until then, it's a clean house. Until then. Um, Savage Patriots will be on today. We'll be tackling that whole target debacle. And don't forget that we'll be going live on Rumble on Saturday with the Savage Patriots. And we'll be talking about all the stuff that we can't talk about on YouTube. So Saturday, same time, 6.30 Eastern on Saturday for the Savage Patriots. But today, 6.30 Eastern, we'll talk about Target. And we'll be on again on Wednesday and on Friday, 6.30 Eastern, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, Too Strong will be on tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern. Um, we will not be having the mix. It's a Monday. We don't have the mix on Monday. We'll be back on Tuesday with the mix at 9.30 eastern okay um i think i did kind of talk about solomon at one point when i did the catch the little foxes so um but if you're talking more along the lines of um the song of solomon type thing i think i might have tackled that too pretty sure i tackled that too uh did I not? Um, I'm pretty sure I did. I am pretty sure I did. Uh, go back through my my list of stuff, and I'm pretty sure that I did tackle all of that as far as the rumble link um it logged me out of my account and i need to find out why i'm gonna see if i can type in the uh the link to it though um Okay, so here's the uh, here's the link. I'll I'll put it here.
pretty sure that's it there. If that link doesn't get you to it, um, I'll try and put it in the description later. If not, it's actually in the link above on the banner on the YouTube channel. You can just click on that and it'll take you straight to the Savage Patient on Rumble. On the banner of this channel, on the banner. Um, you just click on it and it will take you directly. The same thing with the Savage Patriots on on their channel. If you just look at it, you'll see a little rumble symbol. If you click on that, it'll take you right over there. Okay, so it's not really that difficult to find. Um, but like I said, I'll try and put it in the uh, description later today once I figure out why I can't log in. And... Um, yeah. There it is. Why did it? Anyway, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, now I'm in. So, to, 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 yep, that is the that is the channel link right there. Okay, I was right. I did it right. There you go. It's in the chat now. You can have it. Um, I will put it, like I said, in the description of this one. Um, look for it there in case you guys miss it and, uh, we'll catch up then. So we'll see you guys in the next couple hours on the Savage Patriots. If you haven't subscribed yet, go do that. It'll be good stuff. Thank you again, everyone, um, for all your help. Um, and as usual, please take every question you might have to do with your faith and salvation of deep questions, he left the door open, go talk to him about it. Wisdom calls to you from the streets. Please, please, please find wisdom. Peace.